And good evening, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Actually, I hit the wrong button there, folks. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Sorry, I had a little technical difficulty there for a minute. But welcome, everybody, to tonight's In Credit Chat. I'm Mike. Thank you again, as always. I'm realizing I'm really orange today. I don't know what's going on here. Maybe the slide's going to make it a little bit better. Okay. Anyways, welcome, welcome, welcome to tonight's show. We got a really great guest tonight. Um, you've seen me advertising it on online already and stuff, but um, yeah, tonight we're going to talk. We're going to go. We're going to go blast all the way back to our childhood and talk some animation fun. Um, but before we get into that, I just want to thank everybody for coming out to our event that we had um, this past week at Roy C. Ketchum High School. Our um, we had our little mini in credit con at the uh, community festival that we had there. So again, thank you all for that. More great stuff coming. But without further ado, let's jump right into tonight's guest, um, character designer of all, of all of our childhood. Please welcome to tonight's in credit chat, Len Smith. Welcome, Len. Hey, Mike. How hey, are you? I am great. I am great. So, I mean, I I I saw you online. I, I forget where what website I saw you on, but I looked at you and I'm like. My God, you you have you have worked on some of some of the fa my favorite shows, and I know a lot of folks love these cartoons from the '90s. And I mean, you did stuff at Hanna Barbera, you did Disney, and then I mean the the favorite movie of everybody, um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. You worked on that, and I saw you you posted a cool picture. I'll see if I can pull that up in a few minutes um, of Bob Hoskins, and I, you posted it today. Bob Hoskins in front of my artwork, awesome stuff. So um, again, Len, welcome. Thank you for doing this tonight. Um, and I guess we'll start off as like, how did you get started in the world of animation? What companies did you get started with? I got started by watching my dad drawing at the kitchen table when I was a kid. Um, he had a, a scholarship to art school. Uh, it was uh, kind of the Cal Arts before Cal Arts here in California mm -hmm. called Chenards. Um, but he turned it down. He became a carpenter. Um, but I kind of learned that drawing was something you could possibly do through him. Um, I also learned that I don't, didn't want to get up at three in the morning to go build houses <laughs> from him. So uh, that was my start. Um, in high school, I was always the guy sitting in the back of the class, just drawing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in fact, if I had gone to school now, I never, I don't know what would have happened to me because it's either, you know, no kid left behind kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm lucky I can draw because I don't know, <laughs> I don't know a lot. But uh, I started at Hanna-Barbera uh, after high school, about five years after high school. Oh, wow. Um, I just uh, called them made an appointment for an interview. It was that simple back then, I guess. I, I was going to just say that too, but keep, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it took a homemade portfolio, two pieces of cardboard with some tape that I made myself and just dumped all the drawings that I did in high school in it because uh, all of my teachers would tell me, you got to do this for a living. You got to do this for a living because apparently they saw that I couldn't do anything else. <laughs> so I went to uh, Hanna-Barbera. Uh, I interviewed with a guy named Harry Love. He was a, one of yes. the original directors on the old Tom and Jerry shorts. You know, he started with Mintz uh, Animation Studio on the mm -hmm. uh, Crazy Cat cartoons and oh, wow. stuff like that. The early days of animation. But anyway, he uh, took my portfolio and started flipping through it. And about 15 minutes in, he looks at me and goes, you drew these? I said, yeah. He said, uh, wait here. And he went into another office. And I sat out there for 10 minutes and he came back and he said, can you start today? Huh. And with no experience, zero experience, I went to work for Iwo Takamoto who yes. was a man, he was uh, president of Hanna-Barbera at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, they hired me to do uh, development, character design, and I also learned layout there at Hanna-Barbera. Mm -hmm. um, so it was like winning the lottery that day. Wow, I, and, and, and you said this, this was right out of high school then too, when this happened. Well, I. 
you know, I say the teachers told me you should do this, you should do this. And of course, because other people tell me to do something, I avoided it. I avoided it for five years. <laughs> um, so I finally, I finally did do it and uh, got hired that day. So, wow. Well, so now, now let me ask you. So, um, I, cause I, I know you, you, you were, you did a bunch of shows. Do you remember? And again, we've talked to quite a few people from Hanna-Barbera on a credit chat, um, that, that, or at least got their start because it seems like in this business, I mean, the, the companies probably in like the seventies, eighties were really Hanna-Barbera slash Ruby Spears filmation. They were a lot of the, like your, um, Los Angeles based, um, based animation shows and both of those companies were just like churning out show after show after show do you remember what the first show was that you worked on or for shows if that in that case because they had probably a dozen on <laughs> the first show i worked on was uh the flintstones kid okay um they gave me a, a character to draw just to kind of test me out um after that i went on to the snorks and uh pound puppies popeye and son oh wow you know. so you're you're, you're talking our childhood here <laughs> um and I'm, I'm talking the history <laughs> but well you, you, and, and you know like you you know it's it's funny i have an eight-year-old and like for me and and I, I know a couple of people like uh sergey and watching and i have some other people of, of, on uh, facebook looking at this too i mean you say ancient history but like i mean it, it is kind of sad in animation right like yeah. and I, I know something new with the Flintstones. Like a lot of those Hanna Barbera cartoons, you know, if it's not Scooby Doo, people kind of forgotten about them, you know. And and they really were the kings back in the day, weren't they? That's that's what I grew up on. Was uh, yeah, Yogi Bear and Huckleberry Hound and the Flintstones. Uh, my grandfather worked in a quarry, a rock quarry oh, yeah. for a rock quarry. And he would watch it with me. You know, I would climb up on my grandfather's lap and we would watch the Flintstones. So yeah. I, I grew up on this stuff. Gotcha. Now, when you got to Hanna Barbera, um, like obviously you were Harry Love, Iowa Takamoto. Um, did, did you have encounters with both Bill and Joe? Like, how hands on were they in in the process, especially with like the folks in character design? Kind of, and, and I feel like Flintstone Kids, which was really like, probably one of the last spin-offs of their original show, which really was one of their early breakout hits. Like how hands-on were they in the process? I never saw them. <laughs> oh, they really? were even there, I think, I think they had already retired by then. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, this was uh, 1984, 85. Yeah. So I think they were gone already. Gotcha. And this this was- yeah, this he, was he was kind of running the studio. And this was at the uh, th where the thirty four hundred, uh, how do you say, Chua Chuanga Boulevard, right? Yep. That big, that big complex there. You know, because I'm again, some of the folks that we've talked to, and I'm sure you can mention some stuff about it too. Um, oh, I got a couple of questions here about Hanna Barbera already. Um, because that that was quite the warehouse because they they really did all their production in that building too, the voice acting, the the animation. Oh, yeah. One of the coolest days for me, uh, I was passing by the recording room and uh, saw June Foray, oh my and Dawes Butler, and Paul Winchell coming out of there. And it was like a parade of just <laughs> the voice actors. Yeah. So well, because that, that was a memorable day for me. Well, and and that's what um, one of our watchers was asking about if you if you worked, and I guess in this case you got to meet um, Dawes Butler, at, and I guess you probably saw Don Messick at some point because again he was on all these shows as well, you know. Yeah, I I didn't meet them personally, but I just stood there with my jaw <laughs> open, just <laughs> watching them pass. I was new; yeah. I was a kid. Yeah, but I, and, and, and and again, like I th and I think that like what a, what a what a magical magical experience that is too, because like you were sharing, you you know one of your first gigs was Flintstone Kids, and to you this this has such a uh, a big memory from your your own childhood, you know, with your family Definitely. and so and certainly in in regards to Flintstone Kids, I mean, you had Mel Blank and Gene Vanderpile on that show too, so the character voices that you grew up watching were now coming out of um, some of the characters that you were designing. 
yeah, I mean, it was, it was awesome. It was great. Um, so now, um, as as a character designer, so now you you said you got a lot of the, the practice. I mean, and, and I and I think it's it's for a lot of folks who are interested in art. You know, it's it starts at a young age, and then you know, folks. I mean, now what you did is is unfortunately not the way the business works. You 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 were one of many folks. Like I know we had Tom Ruger on here. I was telling you about Lance Falk. Um, like a lot of these people were just like all quick calls to Hanna Barbera, Warner Brothers, like oh, and and taking a job. But um, did you ever get any formal art training, or it really was just that 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 doing the artwork with dad in the um, in the kitchen, growing up? No, any art training that I got was on the job. Mm -hmm. um, I was taught to do layout at Hanna Barbera uh, by a guy named Bill Frake, William Frake, uh, and in fact, he's the guy who hired me to assist him on Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Mm. So we had met there at, at Hanna-Barbera. Gotcha. And, and you know, and, that, and that's actually a nice segue too, because then, you know, and again, I'd say like the um, that time period when you were at Hanna-Barbera, certainly Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And I think Who Framed Roger Rabbit kind of, um, kind of kickstarted it a little bit. I mean, animation had always been around. It still is around, but for, for a while, especially feature film animation, it was dwindling. Like, you know, Disney, um, after after some of their movies in the 70s, certainly after The Black Cauldron, which, again, you look at now, are all, like, amazing films. You know, you can look at, like, Robin Hood. You go to The Rescuers and stuff like that. Like, I, I remember reading, like, you know, Disney was almost kind of tempted to not do animation anymore. And then along, here came Roger Rabbit, and, and then followed, like, not long after by, like, Little Mermaid. And that, I mean, what a, what a renaissance that they, that, that came from it. Um, how did you get the gig over on Roger Rabbit? I got, uh, laid off from Hanna-Barbera about a year after I'd been there. Mm -hmm. Um, it happens, you know, the, the bean, bean counters cut out a lot of, a lot of people, yeah. but, uh, so I went back home. I thought, okay, well, that was fun. And then uh, Bill Frake called me at home and he said, you want to assist me on this project I'm working on? I mm -hmm. said, sure. Awesome. Uh, he didn't tell me what it was exactly. He just told me to show up at this address, you know, which was Flower Street in Glendale. Mm -hmm. In a, a, a renovated airport there in, in Glendale. Oh, my gosh. Um, so I showed up and there were, uh, you know, a mass of people just, you know, going back and forth. And so I found Bill and he said, uh, you know, I, I need your help on the layout. And even then I didn't know what it was. Um, but he kind of explained what he needed and, uh, it just it, it it needed something mm -hmm. you know it just seemed like kind of more hanna Barbera style backgrounds yeah i thought you know this is disney it should be like pinocchio it should be it should have something extra to it and i started you know giving everything a personality you know trash cans fire hydrants everything uh and you know, Dale Bear, who was the director of the sequence there, the Toontown sequence, uh, they liked what I threw out there. So, um, you know, it, it was it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and, and again, like you said, you walked into this building, like, and, and Roger Rabbit was one of those movies in animation that, I mean, I think did, I, we, we talked to Gary Wolf, um, Back to, around, around this time last year, the the the, uh, the author of the, uh, the 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 original novel and creator of Roger Rabbit, um, and it it was something that that Disney kind of had like, in their back pocket for for quite a while, and I think they tried out all these different things with it. So when you you went into it, you know you you had no idea a what the project really was, and then certainly the the phenomenon that that it, it would have become when it came out. Cause I was like, obviously 
probably one of the highest that was probably the highest grossing movie of the 88 right about 1988 that movie came out ish yeah yeah ish Right, so it was like the highest grossing movie of the year, and probably one of the high, at least at the time, probably one of the highest grossing animated films ever that had ever been been created. Well, I think it was it was a love letter to cartoons, real cartoons, not yeah. just animation, but to have all those characters, different characters from different studios, in this one movie, was the real, you know, the grabber of it. You know that yeah. uh, you'll never see that again. I don't think. Yeah, and, and I mean, and you know, and when you say you'll never see that again, I mean, certainly the uh, the cor the corporate the corporate part of it. You know, like to see Bugs Bunny and Mickey Mouse in a scene together. You know. Yeah. <laughs> it, you know, everybody keeps waiting for the sequel, and that, that, that's not going to happen. I don't think. But, yeah, I, I I don't know. It's it's and that's one of those like big Hollywood Hollywood things that everybody everybody wants, and it's like, will they will they will they or won't they? So oh, only, only who knows then. Um, it's only going to happen when Disney buys Warner Brothers, which could happen. <laughs> so yeah, well, this is Disney is buying everybody. <laughs> That's very true. Um, so then really, really, so after Roger Rabbit came, and again, like we said, that's a, that was a love letter to cartoons. I think you said that that quite well. Um, you know, because I, I remember I was in high school around that time. And I mean, at that point, like animation was a hot thing. And then at, at Simpsons was just, you know, getting started. You know, so did the whole world of television animation um, Really, really boomed, you know, primetime animation. Like, I mean, there, there, there were several shows, Family Dog, Fish Police, gosh, a, a, a whole bunch of shows that maybe lasted like six episodes, you know, <laughs> nothing had, everybody wanted to be the next yeah. Simpsons and that took quite a while. Um, and then right. even, even for Saturday mornings in the syndicated market. So for, for folks like yourself uh, that were working in animation, um, were, were, I guess after Roger Rabbit had completed, um, was it was there there more of an opportunity for character designers out there in in, in the industry? Um, like what what was what was that moment like after this huge Roger Rabbit animation is back and rolling? Well, even before the before Roger Rabbit ended, uh, two uh, two of the producers from the Roger Rabbit group said uh disney is starting up tv animation and mm -hmm. you should go over there we we've mentioned your name to them so i was kind of pre-hired at at uh disney animation mm -hmm. tv animation so yeah there was uh there was a lot of work for character designers there because uh, they were doing all kinds of new shows and yeah yeah now let me um, let me ask well oh um, go ahead. What you were gonna say? I'm sorry. No, so I did, uh, you know, the new adventures of Winnie the Pooh, and went over there, and uh, you know, Tailspin came after that, and Bonkers, and, and so it was a good experience there. Yeah. Well, now, now I want to ask you a question, and because I me I remember at the time too, like you mentioned Disney, it, it was around like the, the mid to late eighties that Disney was like, you know, making that venture into uh, TV animation, you know? And I mean, the, the, the original shows, even before the ones that you mentioned, like there were the Wuzzles. And then of course, which that was, a, that was a one season show. Right. And then um, of course, Gummy Bears um, and then Pooh and DuckTales. I, I, cause you, you, you know, you, you worked on this big feature film. You came from the world of Hanna-Barbera and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I I think some people were wondering how Disney was going to pull off this, you know, essentially like Saturday morning style of cartoon because, like you mentioned before, with Roger Rabbit, Disney's Disney's held to this certain standard, right? And all mm -hmm. of a sudden now they're putting their foot in. I mean, and not not even into the world of like just Saturday mornings where really Hanna Barbera and Filmation were dominant. But then they they put their their foot into it where, you know, like that after school hour, and I mean that was really those big syndicated packages and like really like your 
toy commercial kind of things like your GI Joes, your Transformers, right. your He-Mans. Um, when you got it, when you got started with Disney and this television animation department, were there were there people who were concerned? Were there people who were hesitant about it? Just because this truly was a, a, a new endeavor for them, right? Right. The artists that I work with were all Disney fans. You know, they they were concerned about the quality of Disney, the name Disney, mm -hmm. because we all we all grew up on Disney, and it, we were doing it from our heart. So, um, you know, when we did Tailspin, there was pushback because a lot of us, the Jungle Book was what inspired us, to, you know, one of the things that yeah. inspired us to get into animation in the first place. So, you know, it was, it was a big jump to make mentally. Yeah. To use characters from Jungle Book, you know, and have... Shere Khan walking on two legs and, <laughs> and dressed in a suit. Yeah, and I'm just and I'm so, just gonna pull up the picture that because I mean this picture shows your work. I'm just gonna pull this up while you're talking about that. But um, like you, you can see, like yeah, I mean we got what four of the four of the characters there from Tailspin, and I Shere Khan's not on there. But yeah, like Jungle Book's a beloved film, so I guess like how how do you translate Jungle Book to a 65 episode TV series, but not be Jungle Book, right? You, you take the style, you know, the, as much as you can of the characters that were already created and, uh, you know, use those elements to create new characters. That's what I did. I mean, as much as I could. Now, when you guys you know, started... I, I had... Oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? I'm sorry. No, I got... go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to ask you in regards to tail, ta Tailspin, right? Because like you said, that style, I mean, I'm just looking here at the picture with Wildcat, for instance, you know, like Wildcat has like, I, and I, and they all, they all have that Jungle Book style, but Wildcat's really one of those characters that looks like he would, he would have fit in smack dab right in that film because like he has, he has that same nose and uh, mouth like Bagheera, like Shere Khan had in, in the film. Um, and like you said, the, pu the pushback with, with those of you who worked on the show, like was was the concept always supposed to, like the initial concept for Tailspin, was it always supposed to be the Jungle Book characters in in this kind of storyline, or like where did they where that inspiration for Tailspin come from, really? Because it, it, was, it was definitely not Kipling. You'll have, to, <laughs> you'll, you'll have to talk to. Uh... Mark Zaslov or Jim Magon about that. I just, oh, really? Uh, I was given a script and uh, shown the, because uh, the original pitch boards for Tailspin were done by Bob Klein. Okay. Um, so uh, they just gave me a script and asked me to flesh out some other characters. Mm -hmm. You know, originally... You know, one of the versions of Rebecca was going to be a fox. Not oh, a really? Interesting. Yeah. So, you know, I, I did what I could. Um, they also explored using feature animation guys to do the designs. Um, they didn't like what I did with Don Carnage and the kind of goofy, bulbous nose on, on Don Carnage. Mm -hmm. But eventually, you know, I got four four of the main characters. Yeah, I, and I'm and I mean memorable characters, and and like you mentioned, you mentioned Don Carnage. I mean, I still think even to this day, like you be people think Tailspin before. I mean, obviously they think Louis and Blue, but Don people love Don Carnage, you know. And I mean, he made he made his way even into the new iteration of Ducktales. For right. for well. a couple. So it's, it's not the same Don Carnage, but that's not the same Don Carnage. But but again, they they took something that you know that that you had your hand in, and you know, of course, updated for this time period. Um, but like uh, like you said, Rebecca was going to be a fox. Um, with as and again, as a character designer, do they initially like tell you like this character is going to be a fox? This character is going to be a bear? Or they're like here, you know, here's Rebecca Cunningham. You know, she's she's this businesswoman. She's a single mom. 
this this is the animal we want or do they want they give you like kind of like the show bible and let you kind of play with ideas of like and again a show like this what animal you think might fit this so you may do a fox you may do a bear stuff like that and then they all look at it and be like this is the one kind of thing like how does that process work basically that's it um but it wasn't as uh you know blank slate as that they would say we we want this character to be a excuse me a specific animal mm -hmm. you know they want a kid to be a bear obviously and, yeah but uh just rebecca rebecca and molly were tried out as foxes but they didn't go mm -hmm. with that they wanted a bear character in fact rebecca was designed by uh toby shelton yeah um so no, that, that's, I, I mean, you, you shared something tonight that I don't think anybody here in our audience has heard before. And, and you know, you mentioned it, and I'm just like visualizing what Tailspin would have would have been like um, if those characters were that way. Um, now, yeah, just on Tailspin for a moment. Um, so, I mean, obviously you worked with Don Carnage, Molly, you know, Rebecca, and Kit, and um, Wildcat. Um, when it came to the classic characters, right? The, I guess the leg. I guess in that case, the legacy characters for that for that particular property, right? Um, was was and like, did they have a different team, or like with the character designer, do they assign you a certain group of characters, or like like you were working on like the new characters, and they had maybe a team working on like Blue and Louie and Shere Khan because they were those legacy kind of characters. Tailspin was a train, and once it got in motion, it was nonstop. Really? Um, so we were doing just one thing right after another. And, you know, I did some of the model sheets for Louie, and I did model sheets for Baloo. And, mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I worked on the classic characters. Gotcha. Also, were, did, they, did they give you any certain rules for those characters just because of who they were? It, it, like you said, in, in Disney history, right? Right. I mean, the biggest challenge was getting Shere Khan upright, you know, <laughs> and wearing a suit. I can believe it. You know, I mean, most of what I did on Winnie the Pooh, because all of those characters were pre-existing, was just, I was more of a costume designer mm -hmm. on that show. Gotcha. So I carried a lot of that in Tailspin with the, you know, the costume and did it fit the character? And, you know, mm -hmm. I did that with uh, Kit, which is basically, a, you know, a little rascal's character. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, Don Carnage is basically, a, <laughs> you know, a swashbuckler, you know, from the silent movies. And, yeah. So. I, I mean, let me tell you, Don Carnage. He's what Don Carnage is one of those characters that if Disney ever wanted to, and I, and I think I would go with your classic Don Carnage. I mean, I liked him on the new one, but I, I like classic Don Carnage. I, I would I would watch a TV series about Don Carnage and his pirates. I think that'd be a fun show to watch because he. I I did some updated Tailspin characters to see if they'd you know be interested in. I haven't heard anything back, but. Oh, really? So that you, you propose something to them then? Yeah, more streamlined, kind of uh, more like the new DuckTales. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. I think I, you, you can see them on my on my Instagram. Yeah. And and guys, and that great. Um, if you're on Instagram, folks, go to Instagram.com. I know we are. So I have this broadcasting over on Instagram, too. Go to Len Smith Draws on Instagram. And you can you you'll see all 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 of Len's artwork there, so you can see some of the uh, the new the new versions of uh, Tailspin characters. We got some Flintstones art up on there. All all kinds of of great thing. I I was looking at that one horse picture. I'll see if I can pull it up. Um, the Quick Draw. It looks like Quick Draw McGraw, but it's not Quick Draw McGraw. I thought that was a great picture. <laughs> I saw that on there. This is cousin horse. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, you're you're absolutely right. Like um. Tailspin, and I guess I guess you're right. It was a train, you know, because that was uh, the Disney afternoon shows. They all had their own appeal, but th there was really something interesting about Tailspin 
you know, and I I don't know if people when they first saw it wondering what what is this going to be with these Jungle Book characters, but like you, you know there there was really some something to that show, and and you know it's too it's too bad that they they haven't gone back yet to to revisit that show. They're missing out. Yeah, <laughs> you know, there's no, a, no. a wealth of storyline. Yeah, you know, what one one hundred one hundred percent with that. Um, you know, and then the other like, and you and you mentioned uh, Pooh and um, you you mentioned Winnie the Pooh, but um, the other show I want to talk about is Bonkers, and Bonkers Bonkers is one of those shows. I I was a huge Bonkers fan. Do we? <laughs> oh, you don't even want to talk about Bonkers. You know, it's funny. Last week, last week we talked about video games. We were talking about like Sega and oh. all like. Game, the games of the '90s. I pulled out my Bonkers uh, Sega Genesis game. <laughs> I was a Bonkers fan, um, but now I, I know, wow. and I, I don't know if it's so much of a, uh, a a a myth, a rumor, a story, whatever it is you want to call it. But a lot of people believe, and maybe you can sit it straight tonight. A lot of people believe that Bonkers was originally intended as a Roger Rabbit series, and then for whatever reason, with Amblin and whatnot. Again, this is this is what's out there in the world. It's true or not, who knows? And obviously, Disney and Amblin couldn't come to terms, so that's how Bonkers was born. Essentially, um, is there any truth to that, or some somewhat? It's true, true, true story. Yes, true that's, story. That's true. Oh, interesting. So, yeah, they they tried to pitch this series seven times to Jeffrey Kessenberg. And mm -hmm. he wouldn't buy it. And so I, I kind of take a little credit, but I, I re did the, you know, the pitch and everything. And uh, he finally bought it. I don't know if he got tired of looking at it or what, but uh, yeah. But that show, uh, it never worked. I don't think <laughs> for, for well, me. Well well, I, I, you know, and you say for you, I think I honestly, and, and again, I, I, I liked it because I, I was a fan of Roger Rabbit. I was a fan of all that Disney Afternoon stuff. But um, I mean, from from what I remember, and then again, the different things that I've read uh, um, and people I've talked to was the show cut kind of had a lot of production issues because, you know, um, they, they switched the co-star, they switched the style. Um, like half, I'm not, it wasn't even halfway through. Maybe it was like, what, maybe 13 episodes through. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, well, I just remember the first meeting I went to with Gary Kreisel and he, he was in charge of TV animation at the time. And, uh, he, he said, uh, we've got this animated cartoon character in this kind of real world. Uh, and I said, "Were well, you going to film? You're going to do Roger Rabbit and film actors? No, the real people are going to be animated also." <laughs> so, well, what's the what? Yeah. You know, that that was the marching order. So, <laughs> you know, I, I just worked there. Now, do you, I mean you're now you were on essentially? As I know, you did some raw tunage as well. Which I guess that was kind of kind of getting everybody getting to whet the appetite for Bonkers on that raw tunage some um, Saturday morning show, which nobody believe it or I'm and most most unless you're a diehard Disney fan, a lot of people are like, "What the hell is raw tunage?" Um, well, even from the title, what yeah, that's, that's <laughs> not Disney. That's not Disney. Yeah, um, but I, I but again, and one of those other shows that I th I thought I I liked like uh, the the guest host every week. I liked. I thought the Bonkers shorts were good. I wasn't a big Marsu Balami fan. That's a whole other bit of Disney uh, controversy, legal stuff, and storyline with Marsu Balami. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I thought the concept of raw tunage what was was something something different. I think they could have gone more Muppet Show with it, but uh, I, I didn't think it was horrible. At that point, they were trying to chase Tiny Toons. They were trying yeah. to do more cartoony, edgy stuff. Which is not Disney. Yeah. You know? They tried to do that with Winnie the Pooh at, at certain times. And we would push back on the stories. That that is Warner Brothers. We don't we're not Warner Brothers. 
Mm-hmm. You know, we're Disney. Yeah. You know, you can't have the two together. But they tried. Yeah. I, I, and, and again, at that, at that point in time, because, I, I mean, truth be told, they, they, Disney beat Warner Brothers to the punch of, um, of a, a syndicated market, you know, with, with the success of DuckTales and Chippendale and then expanding it onto everything else. But then Warner, once Warner Brothers came on with Spielberg and, and Tiny Toons and then, then Animaniacs and Batman and, and all those other shows, like, yeah, the, well, I mean. Gargoyles. You yeah, know, was was chasing after that, uh, that Batman brother, Batman market. So yeah, and and it's it's really interesting from that from that from that business sense because they won they had that two hour block and they they didn't want they didn't want kids to leave that two hour block because it, it'd be great like I could watch you know Ducktales at three o'clock but then guess what I'm gonna go watch Tiny Toons at at, at three thirty so what what's gonna be the show that's gonna gonna be that hook so people don't go over there you know right. And, and stay with us for two hours. Um, but I'll go, I just want to go back to Bonkers. Now, were you, um, obviously I mentioned Raw Tunage. Were you a part of both iterations of it, if you will? Um, because no, they, they, I, I was they, just on, I was just on Bonkers. You know, they took a lot of the characters that I did for Bonkers and put them in Raw Tunage. Gotcha. Uh, you know, Jitters and Fondier and all. Yeah, but now when I when I mentioned um, the iterations, we were we were on Bonkers for both um, Miranda and for Lucky. Yeah, yeah. Well, so those, those were characters that, that were in the pitch to begin with. Yeah. So. Yeah. Because because I because and and again and maybe you you have some clarity to the story. Um, what because the the original the original ones of Bonkers. Um, that or the the first ones that came out were the ones with Miranda, and and Bonkers had more of that um, he's Bonkers look from the from the Saturday morning Raw Tuna show, and then like I I, I don't know I don't want to say the animation was like grittier, but the Lucky Pakel episodes it, there was there was definitely a different style. Bonkers, his features had all changed. Yeah. Like what what was yeah. what happened between the two the two iterations? that even design wise from a character developer i i don't know i i I was out of the the loop by then you know they they got a another crew and uh, yeah i i don't know no oh so so they they replaced even the whole crew then for that for that at that point then Yeah. yeah oh wow see i didn't i didn't know that that's interesting yeah, I don't even know who was in charge of those later bonkers shows. Oh wow! Um, and then I, uh, you know, again talking classic Disney, and you know, um, and I, th- I think this one, this one probably was cl- close to classic Disney. Little Mermaid, you worked on that show as well. The first and, and I mean, and and like obviously that show, that was pretty much in tune with what what people would expect from Disney for the most part. I think. Right. I think maybe Sebastian got a little goofy at times, but um, like like that that was good. Um, what was that like working on that show? Because again, you, I mean, you 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 you've managed to hop on the shows right after some hit movies, you know. So Little Mermaid again, hot renaissance of of animation. Um, you know, like what what were what were some of the the challenges of of designing these these beautifully animated feature film characters and designing those those looks and now obviously with the 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 smaller budgets of saturday morning what were some of the challenges in that well it was easier because you didn't have to draw legs on anybody so Mm -hmm. it was was a basic tail on everybody sure so um you know again it was like the tailspin you just took the elements of the movie that already existed and kind of, you know, did what you needed to do, character-wise. Um, mm-hmm. So you know, the the style was already set. I was just drawing whatever the script called for. Gotcha. Now I I, I, I want to. I'm sorry. I said I wish I had something more interesting to say about that. No, no. I mean, listen. I, you're right. You mean like. 
Yeah, you don't have to draw legs. <laughs> it makes your jobs a little bit easier, no doubt about it, right? Um, Marshall. Let, yes. let, let me ask you this question. Um, and again, just about like really the, the integrity of of animation. Certainly, like I mean, working working with these these classic these classic Disney characters. Um, mm -hmm. And, and and I mean and this this is this is purely even like opinion from from the animation standpoint because you you work in animation but you you are also a, a, an animation fan you appreciate it you know you're not, it's you know it's it's a paycheck for you but you also like a, you love your job that you do you know um, yeah. you take you take a show like Tailspin with the Jungle Book characters you take a show like Little Mermaid. You know, I mean, even even looking at Warner Brothers stuff, I, I know you didn't do any of the Warner things, but like you're you're taking like a character like Bugs Bunny, right? And these these are truly characters that when you think about them, and, and maybe Bugs Bunny a little bit different, but like they they're theatrical kind of characters, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Do you do you feel like? And I, I, we'll use Mermaid as a real example. Like Mermaid, such 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 a beautiful movie. Um, you know, memorable classic, right? Um, mm -hmm. Disney did the Mermaid TV series. They then they did the Aladdin show, the Hercules show. Do you think that almost? I don't want to say cheapens the theatrical experience. Do you know what I'm trying to like say like, you know, because it, it definitely is like feeding into the the audience's wants. But like that'd be like getting like Snow White the animated series or Pinocchio the animated series. Like um, work, working in the business, what are your thoughts on some of that? Like, are are some properties should not be touched after the, those feature films? Well, don't get me started on these live action movies that they're making. Oh, I I can agree with you. One, why, why? <laughs> that just that just what you just said just leads into that. <laughs> but I mean, it's a you true it's, it's a true thing though. I I agree one hundred percent. They're gonna screw with Snow White, you yeah. know. The, that's you know. Anyway, <laughs> uh, no, that's a that's a valid argument. You know, when Winnie the Pooh was on, you couldn't take two steps outside of your door without seeing Winnie the Pooh on something. They saturated the market yeah. with it, you know. So if something is successful, they'll drain it, or yeah. they did then. You know, if Frozen had been around then, we would have had a Frozen series. Yeah. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, they've they've got the Tangled series on on, you know, one of the Disney channels. Yeah, they do. It, it continues. Um, if something's successful, they're gonna synergize it to death. Yeah, and <laughs> I, 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 because because even like like you take an iconic character like Mickey, right? Like Mickey, the company mascot, and and listen, I know I, I've read. I know Mickey's a very hard character for people to to write or to um you know do do whatever with. But and I have an eight year old son. He grew up watching Mickey Mouse's Clubhouse. But like to me, like that's that that's not where Mickey should be. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's the mascot of the company. You know, right? But they had to keep doing Mickey's in order to keep the copyright. Yeah, you know, well, no, it would have been situation. public domain. Um, but those those Mickey shorts that they did that are yes. kind of those are great. I love them. The, the, yeah, like they're really like they're kind of dark and they're really silly. I, yeah, I know, I know exactly which ones you're talking. <laughs> about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, and I'm I'm a traditionalist. Uh, I like to see things kept true to their, you know their origins but uh yeah. those those are really cool yeah. i enjoy those now i we have a, we have we have a couple of questions here in the chat and we're 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 rocking and rolling here tonight we got we we're, we've been flying top flying by um this is a really good question you know we here we are talking about like that cheapening effect right mm -hmm. um carl wants to know how is disney able to mass produce TV animation without resorting to the limited animation style of Hanna-Barbera. They're the richest company on earth and can get what they want out of anybody. That they... <laughs> I, 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 I guess you can't argue with that answer. Carl, I hope, I hope, I hope that's a good answer for you. Right. 
<laughs> but if they want to spend the money on it, they'll build it. <laughs> oh my God! But yeah, uh, but I mean, you're you're probably right. They have they Hanna Bar there, there is no Hanna Barbera world. <laughs> There's no Euro yeah. Hanna Barbera. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So this is this is this is true. Um, we have some. We have a question about some um, advice. I, um, this is from Joe Ryan. He says um, he said he's looking forward to this interview tonight with you. Um, he wants to become a character designer himself. Do you have any uh, do you have any advice for a recent graduate looking into getting um, into that part of the industry? What do they look for in portfolios and things like that? I, I'm sorry, I, I have no idea what they look for now. Um, <laughs> you know. Uh, You've got to show your stuff online. Uh, you have to get noticed because when I was, when I came through, there was no internet. Yeah. You know, now you're battling, you're competing with everybody in the world who can draw. So I'm sorry, but it's rough. You better be good uh, or, or very lucky like I was. <laughs> no, and 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 you and and you know, Joe Joe came in, I think, a little bit late, and you you were saying it before. You know, when you got into it, you know, you 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 used the two pieces of cardboard and made your little po little portfolio. Um, you know, again, it's and yep. and you made you made that phone call. Like I, we had Tom Ruger on last year, and and you probably know Tom Ruger or or heard of him, Tiny Tunes, and he was at Hanna Barbera. Um, like I remember when we talked yeah. to him, he said he, he, he made a phone call. I guess he called call, cold call. Like I think it was Bill Hanna's um, office and he got himself an interview somehow in there, you know, and uh -huh. like nowadays that kind of stuff that, that, that doesn't happen. And you're absolutely right. I, I think that's really, that's really any kind of like artistic profession. Now the competent, because of social media and YouTube and Instagram and all that stuff, the, the, the bar is just raised even higher because you can be living out in the middle of nowhere. Like nor like back then you had to be like in LA or New York, one of the big cities. You can be out in the middle of the Midwest and you know, have like the best of the best. You know, the competition well, is that right now. There are, you know, kids in other countries mm -hmm. who don't have all the distractions we have here in America. And they're focused on their art. They, you know, they are awesome um and and you're competing with them and they also will accept less in payment for what mm -hmm. they're doing it's so true. you can't compete you can't compete with them you, they're better artists and they they do it for cheap mm -hmm. so you know i used to make a good living just on freelance yeah that, that went with the internet yeah, so, no, you're, you're, and and I guess it, to, to it, add on, to what and and to add on to what you're saying with that too. I mean, so as as a free as a freelance artist, I mean, again, your prices are negotiable because you you're 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 your own boss, you know. But that's a way of getting your stuff out there. So you're like mentioning these these folks that are in other countries, and there's folks here in this country too who who are really I'm, good, and definitely. and and and, the, and they'll they will take the lesser of the payment. But at the end of the day, their payment is the more they the more they put out, the more exposure they get. And once right. they get that exposure, then that price goes up, and that's yep. how they uh, that's how they rock but, and roll. But, with that. but you got to build your name and your style. Yeah, you know, you get a distinct style, and uh, you do it enough to where people recognize your name, then you can get there. Yeah, um, I never I never had a distinct style. I'm all over the place. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's lucky that I did it, those big things then so that I could establish my name at least. Yeah. And and Joe, Joe wanted to also say, he said he remembers the show House of Mouse and grew up on that show, seeing traditional animation. Oh, he's just talking about Mickey. Um, and that's traditional animation. It's prime and classic Mickey cartoons. That's how he remembers him. And, and you know, he actually, Joe, by saying that, he really does bring up an interesting thing as we're sitting about the the changes in the industry. Um, like, anim, like traditional animation really doesn't exist anymore. I mean, I mean there, there are people... Who, who are doing it on their own out there like independence.
but like you know disney and warner brothers they're not doing like the traditional hand-drawn cell animation the inking and painting and all that stuff and and like for me as as a fan of animation i i collect even some animation cells like like that 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 is kind of sad because like that the real piece of artwork that you could have hanging in your home or whatever like that doesn't exist anymore nope no um one of the best pieces of 2d animation i've seen lately is klaus on netflix oh yes santa claus yes beautiful you know hopefully that that sparks a new renaissance yeah. Yeah, and and I and I and like you mentioned, two D animation, like like it would it would be great to start seeing that kind of stuff. I mean, listen, you you look at a movie like Frozen, you know, um, a lot of these like I guess CGI, like the, even like the uh, the Scooby Doo movie that came out last year, you know, like like you know they look they look nice, but they and they they are a cartoon, but they're not the cartoon like when you think of a cartoon, that's not what it really think it is. Like it's it's like a, it's like a video game almost. The hybrid, yeah. Yeah. Um, was there a question in that? Oh no, 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 no! no. I, 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 was just, I, I agree. With I, was, you. I, I was, I was just making a statement, you know, and and like the, show, the shows that you worked on. I mean, you know, like like the, you 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 re and I'm not saying that people don't don't work hard on these things, but like when, <laughs> that term, blood, sweat, and tears. Like there really is blood, sweat, and tears, and probably some of those. Uh, cartoons that we watched you know we didn't Literally. see it as much in tv animation only because at that point they were shipping everything overseas yeah it was going to paris it was going to you know uh, asian countries and things but um on roger rabbit they did it old school you know you know layering the uh mm -hmm. the animation paper on top of the photo stats of the you know Mm -hmm. scene of the film and it was old school you know the, the, the way uh song of the south i said yeah song of the south was done you know? yeah but, no and and, and like if they did a movie like roger rabbit now i mean they, they they'd probably be able to do it like in half the time just because they, well, they, they would not i would not do it in that style yeah i, I mean I've seen the uh, seen the um, the previews of the new Space Jam movie. Yes, and it. I, I'm sorry, but it looks like they vomited animation all over the screen. <laughs> There's so much going on. Yeah, you know, and, and you know that's all computer assisted and all that. But. Yeah, absolutely. Like the, the, those crowd, you're talking about those crowd scenes, and it's great because we're seeing all these classic Hanna Barbera and Warner Brothers characters in there. But they're they're just there's so much, and it's crowded. Yeah, it's uh, you know, can we get every single thing we ever did in there? <laughs> yeah, I, I, yes, I, you can, but do you want to? <laughs> hey, listen, I'm happy to see the Herculoids in there. I think that's fun. <laughs> you, you'll see them for a second, half a second. Exactly, and and Warner Brothers will hope that that turn. People are like, "Oh, who is that little uh, blobby creature? Let's make a movie out of that, right?" <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, listen. Um, this Len, this this is this has been a lot of fun tonight, and everybody watching. Um, thanks for tuning in. Um, now again, we want to send everybody over to Len Smith Draws. You know, so you can find Len's art there. You know, shoot him a message, say hey, tell him how much you love his art. And then um, you, you said that you are making appearances. Um, you're, 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 you're making appearances out on the West Coast. If so, if anybody's watching us out there in the California area, and there's some shows you can probably go check out, Len, at some of these shows. And I'm going to guess that you're doing sketch commissions, all that good stuff, right? Yeah. Um, I'm also open to doing shows in other states. Oh, listen, well, I, I will be in touch when we get um, things rocking and rolling here in New York again. Um, and are there any projects outside of conventions that you're currently working on that you can talk about? Um, not that I can talk about right now. Um, gotcha. Stay tuned. Things things are happening. Good, good. Well, listen, I, you you mentioned that tailspin thing, so hopefully uh, that would be that would be very awesome <laughs> if, if, if about doing some kind of spinoff. Hopefully, somebody's watching this and 
<laughs> and, and I just want to say, Joe says very valid points. Thank you for taking the time to answer his question regarding the industry with some cold, hard facts. It gives me some truth to what's going on currently in the animation industry and how I need to step up my game. Joe, that's why we do this. So you can, so we, we can help, you know, people who are interested in the business. So, uh, Len, thank you. Thank you so much again. Just hold on for me while we wrap up. Um, folks, thank you again for tuning into in credit chat next week. I'm going to have the nerds of the round table on with us here. Um, I've been on their podcast. So this week, next week, they're going to join me over here. So, uh, Folks, see you all next week on In Credit Chat. And Len, thank you once again for joining us.